Welcome to IG Motors. Today, we take you deep into the Cold War battlefield to explore one of America's most significant nuclear missile systems, the MGM-31 Pershing I and Pershing 1A. Let's begin. The MGM-31 Pershing was a mobile, medium-range ballistic missile system developed by the United States during the height of Cold War tensions. It was designed to replace the older PGM-11 Redstone missile and provide NATO forces with a quick response nuclear strike capability that was both accurate and mobile. The original version, known as Pershing I, entered service in 1962 with the United States Army. The missile was solid-fueled, which meant it could be stored and launched more quickly compared to earlier liquid-fueled systems. It had a two-stage design and a maximum range of approximately 740 kilometers, making it capable of reaching deep into Warsaw Pact territory from launch sites in Western Europe. Pershing I was armed with a W-50 nuclear warhead. This warhead came in several yield variants, ranging from 60 to 400 kilotons. Just for comparison, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was around 15 kilotons. Even the smallest variant of the Pershing warhead had four times the destructive power. The missile used an inertial guidance system that relied on gyroscopes and accelerometers to navigate its way to the target. While not as accurate as today's satellite-guided weapons, for the time, it provided a high degree of precision, especially when combined with a nuclear payload. Now let's talk about deployment. Pershing I was mounted on mobile launch vehicles, allowing the system to be quickly moved, deployed, and concealed. This mobility made it a highly survivable system, difficult for enemy forces to target before launch. The missiles were deployed to West Germany, where they became a vital part of NATO's nuclear deterrent strategy. But Pershing I was just the beginning. As technology evolved and NATO needed a faster, more efficient missile system, the United States introduced an improved version, the MGM-31A Pershing 1A. Pershing 1A entered service in 1969 and brought several major upgrades. While the missile itself remained largely the same, the launcher and support systems were completely redesigned. The most significant improvement was in mobility and reaction time. Pershing 1A could be fired much faster than its predecessor, giving NATO commanders a quicker response option during a crisis. The 1A version used a tracked transporter erector launcher, allowing it to be moved across rough terrain with greater ease. This increased flexibility was crucial in ensuring that the missile could be deployed under a wider range of battlefield conditions. Pershing 1A retained the same warhead and range as Pershing I, but its improved electronics and streamlined launch procedures meant that it could be operated with greater efficiency and reliability. The upgrade also allowed for a simplified command and control system, making it easier to integrate into NATO's wider nuclear command structure. Interestingly, while the United States controlled the missiles, they were co-deployed with the German Bundeswehr. This joint arrangement reflected the strong cooperation between NATO allies during the Cold War. However, the nuclear warheads themselves remained under strict U.S. control, following the dual key principle. That meant both American and German authorities had to agree before any launch could occur. During the 1970s and early 1980s, the Pershing 1A stood as a powerful symbol of NATO's resolve. Positioned across West Germany, these missiles were a constant reminder to the Soviet Union that any aggression in Europe would be met with swift and devastating retaliation. However, the deployment of Pershing missiles was not without controversy. As arms races heated up in the 1980s, public protests across Europe grew. Peace activists argued that missiles like the Pershing 1A increased the chances of nuclear war rather than preventing it. The fear was that the short flight time of the missiles, just six to eight minutes from launch to target, left too little time for diplomacy or response, pushing the world closer to accidental war. Despite the tension, the Pershing 1A remained in service until the mid-1980s, when a new generation of ballistic missiles, like the Pershing 2, began to take its place. 
The Pershing II had a much longer range, improved accuracy, and a maneuverable re-entry vehicle designed to evade Soviet defenses. Then came a turning point in history. In 1987, the United States and the Soviet Union signed the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF Treaty. This landmark agreement called for the complete elimination of all ground-launched ballistic and cruise missiles with ranges between 500 and 5,500 kilometers. Although Pershing 1A's range was on the lower end of this spectrum, it still fell under the treaty. As a result, the U.S. began dismantling all Pershing 1A systems, and by the early 1990s, the entire fleet had been destroyed. The missile that had once stood as a powerful nuclear deterrent was now part of history. Today, Pershing missiles can still be seen in military museums across the United States and Europe. Their legacy reminds us of a time when the world stood on the edge of nuclear conflict, and how diplomacy eventually pulled us back. The MGM-31 Pershing I and 1A were not just missiles. They were tools of strategy, signals of strength, and symbols of an era dominated by geopolitical tension, brinkmanship, and ultimately, arms control. Thanks for watching IG Motors. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Cold War missile technology, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. We have more powerful and fascinating military systems coming your way. See you in the next one.